later this morning, a vigil will be held for Saskia Jones and Jack Merritt, the two victims who lost their lives in Friday's London Bridge terror attack. Saskia and Jack were working at a criminal rehabilitation conference when 28-year-old terrorist Usman Khan stabbed them to death. But in the face of tragedy, there were also incredible acts of human bravery as a number of men tackled and disarmed Khan. Two of those men, Thomas and Stevie, join us now. Uh, alongside them is former Defence Minister Tobias Elwood, who famously fought to save the life of PC Keith Palmer at the 2017 Westminster terror attack. So good morning to all of you and good thank morning. you very much. Good morning. Um, and we'll start by paying tribute to Saskia and to Jack and to the other people who were injured and all their families um, with this tragic, tragic event. And you insist that you are witnesses and not heroes. Correct, yes. Um, you know, the pair of us uh, kind of stumbled across the incident um, whilst we were travelling from Borough Market up towards our next pickup at uh, Liverpool Street Station. Mm -hmm. um, and we were alerted to, to what was going on by, uh, or at least I was, uh, by a puff um, of foam from an extinguisher, uh, whereby uh, sort of members of the public had already tried um, or were currently trying to apprehend. Um. And what did you think at first? Because it's not the first thing that springs to your mind. I mean, people have sort of talked about they thought that people were just having a fight, that there was something going on. What did you assume was happening, first of all? Yeah, no, well, I pulled up and I saw, you know, sort of 10, 15 people running away in the opposite direction. Right. And I just felt compelled to jump out and try and find out what was happening. So as I'm making my way over there, I'm just thinking that this is just a group of guys just having a bit of a fight, having a bit of a tumble around. Um, but as I'm running over, they mentioned the words, they were screaming, they, he stabbed two people, he's killed two people. I saw, I therefore saw the blood and I just wanted to get involved and help out as much as I possibly could. Right. But the guys that were there, already on top of him, are amazing human beings. Tell me 100%. what they were doing at that time. So uh, they were just sort of bundling him like a, you know, like a football celebration, sort of just all on top of him, frog piling him, uh, trying to dislodge the, the knives that are in his hands that I assumed I saw electrical tape and I, I'm, I'm just guessing they were taped around his hands to try and... Uh, you know, so make sure that nobody could try and dislodge them. But we were just doing everything we could. Tom kicking at his hands, me kicking at his head, just trying to do anything we could to assist the guys that were there, mm. trying to dislodge these knives so he wouldn't run around and was hurt he, anyone else. Was he speaking? He was. He was, uh, he was constantly just saying, get off, get off. And we all found that very odd, because we're not going to get off you. Of course, you weren't going to do that. Um, you didn't spot the hoax suicide vest at the time. And it was it when the officers came up, the armed officers came up, that they, when they told you to back away, because a lot of people at the time were going, oh my gosh, you know, there was these normal folk walking around, they saw this guy and he had a suicide vest on, but you, you didn't notice that, that he had that? No, not at all. Um, I mean, we were only made aware by the presence of a vest, be that a hoax or not, um, upon the arrival of the armed services. Um, so once they had pulled all of the brave uh, chaps that were, you know, holding um, the suspect down. They rolled him over onto his back and it was at that point that we were alerted to the fact that he may have a bomb on him, sort of the, the shout of, he, there's a bomb, run, move. Yeah. Um, and it was at that point that, you know, everybody involved, members of the public, just tried to, to get to cover and yeah. just try and get out of the way, really. And what followed next, as if the lead up to, to, to that wasn't harrowing and horrible enough um for you on that bridge mm. when you go about your daily business you don't expect to witness something like that and what happened next must have been harrowing um yeah i mean uh, watching a, a a man be shot is quite a, a horrific experience mm. um you know i've played call of duty for many years but it doesn't <laughs> really prepare you for what you're going to see um you know the I think the, key, the, 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 the only really role that I sort of played was just trying to keep the school children on the back of the bus calm. Um, you know, seeing them there with the, the, the glass panel at the back of, uh, of the bus um, and sort of seeing them crouch down. Um, you know, I, I unfortunately got myself into that situation, so the best thing to do at that point was just sort of, you know, say to them, you're OK, you're fine, it'll be all good, um, and just get the bus out of there and just make sure that the kids were safe. Where, where were you? So I was just sort of standing at the end, uh, next to the gentleman who had the, apparently he was an undercover police officer and he had the knife in his hand that he apprehended. Um, so I was just standing just to the side of him um, and policemen were doing such an amazing job, but their attention was being taken away from the suspect having to deal with everyone telling him to get back. So I felt compelled to assist to just tell everyone, just mm. a lot of swear words going on. 
just telling everyone to get back as quickly as possible because people are walking up on the situation, not no, not really knowing mm. that this what well, this is going on. They just think it's just they just want to get to work or they're trying to go home. So I was trying to inform as many people and trying to get back at, at, as many people as possible so the police could actually who are putting their lives on the line for us. Mm. You really take that for granted until you're in a situation where you see it, where they literally throw themselves at this person. You, um, <coughs> you I mean, it's, it's Monday morning now. This happened on Friday. I imagine over the weekend, you've, this must have gone through your head so many times what the outcome could have been. Things could have been so different for the both of you. Um, those are images you're not going to get out of your head. How are you processing this? Um, I, I don't know if, uh, if I have processed it, even if at all. He hasn't um, yet. He no, hasn't yet. I don't think I have. Um, you know, the, the only thing that's sort of really sticking with me at the moment is just kind of the amount of attention um, that, you know, both Stevie and I have received. And it, it, it has been overwhelming. You know, it's, it's lovely to hear from, from family and friends and loved ones, you know, saying, you know, that they're glad that we're OK and, you know, that they're sort of proud of what we did. But... You know, almost sort of feeling a little bit guilty um, that, you know, attention is on us. You know, I understand why the, the three original chaps that sort of chased them out of the fishmongers want to remain um, private. I fully respect them for doing that. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it, the onus should be on them for, for everything great that happened because if it wasn't for them, I can't say is that Stevie and I would have acted, you know, the, exactly the same. Well, they saved lives. What, they? Um, what's, your, what's your business called? Um, so we work for a company called Small Car Big City right. um, and we um, take people on bespoke private sightseeing tours of London yeah. just in classic Mini Coopers. So you know London very well. You yeah. travel the streets. I'd like to think lot. so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so how do you feel about being Londoners in town now? Extremely proud. You know, I'm extremely proud to be a Londoner. Um, I moved here sort of five, six years ago. Stevie's been here. He's I've lived here all my life, born and bred North London boy, so um, London is my home and my mm. baby, you know. And, and I just feel very proud of the people that jumped in and intervened, you know, obviously Andy and Lucas being a couple of the names that are being sort of put around in regards to the initial stop of the, th of the three gentlemen that initially jumped in there. And I just want to say thank you to those guys for just being amazing human beings. And, you know, people like that make me very proud to live in this wonderful city. OK, well, well done, both of you. Now, Tobias, you, um, two years ago, the Westminster terror attack, you fought to save the life of PC Keith Palmer. When you see this news on Friday, and again, it's happened again, somewhere else in the city, how, how do you feel when you see that? I think two emotions come over. I think mm. they've been shared by the British people. You know, again, has this happened on the same bridge as well? But also huge praise for those who step forward, such as these people here. Absolutely incredible that we locked this down so quickly indeed. We speak about the first responders, the police, the ambulance and the fire service. Actually, they're just the individuals who happen to be in the wrong place uh, at the wrong time. But as we see here, do absolutely the right thing. And it makes me very proud indeed that there is a determination, despite this threat, which will not go away. Mm -hmm. People still will be radicalised and be told that they will be rewarded for their behaviour, for their attacks, with a place in paradise. So the threat will not disappear but British people are willing to step forward and close this down and say, our life will continue. Our way, our standards, what we believe in, will not be actually challenged by what you actually do. Mm -hmm. um, over the weekend, uh, you know, we're in a run-up to an election. I suppose it was inevitable that it would be politicised, but the, the, the facts are that Khan was attending Cambridge University's Learning Together event to rehabilitate and educate criminals. Um, both victims... Cambridge graduates, Jack, um, uh, course coordinator, and Saskia, a volunteer. Um, so he was released without a parole board. Um, and we've seen actively that, uh, that other people in a similar situation now are being um, readdressed. Uh, how do you feel about our justice process? Stepping back from this event as well, I don't think we've come to terms with the fact that there are people out there that are willing to die for their cause. The creation of Guantanamo Bay was designed to somehow avoid their own judicial system because they didn't know what to do with these people that are actually somehow believing that they want to continue to kill. What's so sad about this situation is the two people that died were actually trying to rehabilitate this individual. Mm. But absolutely, let's put our hand up and say mistakes were made. We need more resources into our judicial system. We need to make sure that there is an appeal process that works. How can somebody have their sentence reduced by eight years and not even face a parole board to check whether or not they are safe to put out back onto the streets? 
But these are difficult judgments for any individual, any court, you know, judge to actually make. But ultimately, we have to recognise the fact that this threat will not go away and we need to invest more funds into this. Uh, but ultimately, mistakes were made and we must uh, you know, own up to that. And can I ask you, sort of putting politics aside, as somebody, as, as a man who's witnessed something horrific two years ago, here are two men next to you who also have seen something horrific last Friday. What advice do you give them? Well, they were very honest in saying what has happened over the weekend. You yeah. asked that, that question. Please look after each other. Your friends, I understand. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> what you've done is quite incredible mm. and you are to be congratulated. But the way this affects the mind is, is very difficult to understand. Um, I was affected by the loss of my brother. I had to wade through 200 bodies to find him. And I, I was, was in the army. He was killed and, in the, the Bali bombing. He was killed in the Bali bombing. And because I was in the army, I thought, I'm strong. I don't need to... I'll be able to cope with this, as many veterans do. But ultimately, it can be latent, it can incubate. Um, be, be willing to talk about it. You know, put your hand up uh, and, and be honest about what had happened because it affects people in absolutely different mm. ways. But you can be very proud of what you did. And I think it's very, very important that we acknowledge the actual advice is absolutely to run the other way. But whenever there is somebody that wants to intervene for the right cause and to see again, others then join in a collective effort to say, mm. let's close this down. That is a powerful message to any would-be terrorist to say, if you try and affect our way of life, we will corner you, we will arrest you, or you'll be shot. But you will not change the way we live. Well, Thank, so. you. Thank, yeah. you Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.